Yes. Any questions? We're good? We're happy? Content? Page 17 and 18, no questions at all? Not even one, kind of, sort of? Yeah. The, the perimeter, 17 and 18? Okay, so 17, you have this. So if you know those sides are x plus 3, so are those. So the perimeter is the distance all the way around as I go all the way around it. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. I have 4 x's and plus 12. That's what the perimeter equals on 17. That's all it is. No labeling needed. And then 18. 18 looks like this. You have the rectangle. If that's x plus 6 and that's x plus 3, that means over here is x plus 3 and over here is x plus 6. So the perimeter is 1, 2, 3, 4 x's plus 3 plus 6 plus 6 plus 3 is 18. So that's what the perimeter is. That's all you have to do for those. Those are the answers. Cool? Any other questions you came across that I could help you with? Uh, 14. 14. Okay, number 14. It says 6x minus 8 plus 2x minus x squared plus 9. Okay, so I have a 1 out front here, so if I distributed the 1, basically this is what's happening. It gives me the same thing. There's also 1 out here. If you distribute that, I'm going to get plus 2x minus x squared plus 9. And then I'm going to list it in descending order. Okay? So that is negative x squared. And these are then like terms as well, so plus 8x. And these are like terms as well, so that's plus 1. So this is a quadratic because it's raised to the second power, and there's three terms, so it's a trinomial. Trinomial. Does that make sense? Um, Anything else I could help you with on that? <laughs> oh, did it ask for... Did it ask for a leading coefficient? Oh, okay. So, so if you needed to find the leading coefficient, you look here. So, the leading coefficient of this would be negative one. That's all it is. Okay. Good question. Anything else? Five. Number five is eight x squared minus 11x to the third. So if we want to put it in standard form, I'm going to change the order of it, make sure I have the signs right. So that's not standard form. Standard form means it's in descending exponent order. And then the leading coefficient, the leading coefficient is this, so it's negative 11. And then if we name it by degree, it is cubic. That's because it's third degree. And then number of terms, I have two terms, so it's a binomial. Anything else? Happy? No one's crying? 15? Number 15 says x minus 10x to the third plus 5x squared minus 9 plus 6x to the third minus x squared minus 8x plus 9. Okay, so basically there's a 1 out front. If you distribute the 1 on the first one, none of the signs change. It just stays as is. 
And then if I distribute on the second one and I get this, none of the signs change because they're all positive, or this positive out in front of it. And then I'm going to look at like terms. So these are like terms. So negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4, so negative 4x to the third. And then my x squared, that's going to give me plus 4x squared. And then my x is minus 7x. And then the 9s just cancel out. Okay, so if we name this, classify it by degree, well, that means it's cubic. And there's three terms. So it's a cubic trinomial. Okay. Anything else I could help you with? All right. So will you please get to page nineteen? Page nineteen. All right, so adding and subtracting polynomials means I'm going to look be looking for like terms. So I'm on the right one. Cool. So problem number one, example number one. I have two things that are grouped together, agree? Meaning that two, two different things in parentheses. So it looks like it looks like we're just adding these together. Okay, so I'm going to drop the parentheses. And then basically if I distribute positive 1 over this, it's going to give me this. Okay. So then I'm going to start looking for like terms. So I have x to the third by itself. Okay, we're going in descending order, which means I'm putting it in standard form. Okay, and then I have x squared and x squared. So 3x squared and 6x squared is 9x squared. And then positive 8x, positive 8x is positive 16x. And then minus 15. <laughs> so this would be a cubic polynomial if you had a name. It's a polynomial because you have more than three terms. I and would you, also make sure that you are practicing labeling it just so that you are able to recognize it on the test because we may ask you to label it on your next quiz. So make sure you are understanding how to, to label it. So it's cubic because of the third power. That's cubic. Polynomial is there's four terms. Okay, we don't have a name after, we don't have a name after trinomial. It just goes after that, goes becomes a polynomial. Okay, example two, I don't have any parentheses there, do you agree? So example number two, I have negative 3x to the third and positive 2x to the third. So if I combine those together, Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, so I get negative x to the third or negative 1x to the third. Doesn't matter how you do it. And then I have 4x to the second and negative 2x to the second. So if I combine those together, 4 minus 2 is 2. So I get plus 2x to the second. <coughs> Excuse me. And then if I combine my x's, so 8 minus 6 is 2, so I get 2x. Yeah, this one did. And then purple. I have positive 12 minus 10, so 12 minus 10 is 2. So this would be a cubic because you have x to the third. The third means cubic. And then there's four terms, so it's a polynomial. Uh, just go put it right on that open Wait, computer. 
Because my highest exponent is a three. You label based on the highest exponent, no matter where it falls. Okay. All right. So thoughts for example number three. What should I do? I have only a portion of it that's in parentheses. Can I distribute just positive one over the parentheses? Yeah, so I get 4x to the 4th. Nothing changed. Uh, if it was right in front of it, yeah. That's 2. All right, my highest exponent is to the 4th power. There's only one of them, 4x to the 4th. So because it's raised to the 4th, it's going to be called a quartic. Okay, I don't know that, how many terms I'll have yet. Uh, I have 8x to the 3rd. I have 9x squared and 12x squared. If I add those together, 9 plus 12 is 21. And notice I'm in descending order. I'm doing it in. And then I have negative 3x and negative 4x. That's negative 7x. And 6 and 5 add together to give me 1. So there's more than three terms, so it's a polynomial. That's it. Seems pretty straightforward. So things you have to remember when you're adding or subtracting like terms. A like term is the same letter, and that letter is raised to the same exponent. Okay? It changes when you're multiplying them, but we're not there yet. We're just adding, we're combining by adding right now. All right, can I move on? Yes. Well, thank you. Nothing else on that? Cool. All right. So now we are going to subtract. Okay? So the only thing out in front of here is a 1, so I'm going to distribute the 1 over. And that gives me negative 2x to the third plus x plus 4. Yeah, you have a negative. So watch, the signs have changed. It was a positive 2x to the third, now it's a negative 2x to the third. It was a positive 3x, now it's a negative 3x. It was a positive 9, now it's a negative 9. So please note... Because of this negative here, this sign, this sign, and this sign changed. Do you agree? Okay. And subtraction is just the same as that we've always known it to be. So I have negative 2x to the third and negative 2x to the third. So that's <coughs> negative 4x to the third. And then I have positive x and negative 3x. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2. x comes along. And then I have 4 minus 9, which is negative 5. So it's raised to the third power, so it's a cubic trinomial. There's three terms. Okay. Do you feel comfortable with what I've just done? All right, so number five, I have a one basically out here, so I'm going to distribute. No signs change. Got a Starbucks gift card? So we, okay, thanks. Let me pass it back to Arson. Back behind you in the burgundy shirt. Okay, the second one, I'm going to distribute that negative over the parentheses. So if I distribute the negative, all the signs change. So the negative 7x to the third changes to positive 7x to the third. The negative 2x squared changes to positive 2x squared. The positive 2x turns to a negative 2x. The negative 5 turns to a positive 5. Okay, 
So again, let me just highlight so you can see because of this negative, this sign changed, this sign changed, this sign changed, and this sign changed. Do you agree? Now we're going to start looking for like terms. So we're looking for the highest exponent. So it looks like I have x to the third is my highest exponent. So 7 minus 5 is 2, so I get 2x to the third. And then I have negative 2x squared and positive 2x squared. Oh, why do I have a negative here? I'm sorry. I tell you. 5 plus, there it should be 12. 12x to the third? Is that right now? I'm so sorry. I'm like adding signs where they shouldn't be. These cancel, right? Yeah. That cancels that, so we don't have to write anything down. <laughs> and then negative 6x minus 2x is minus 8x. And then 6 added to 5 is 11. So it's cubic. In three terms. Three terms is how much? Trin Trinomial. <laughs> Cool. Is that all the examples on that one? That's it? Can I move on? Yeah. I don't know, can you? Not too bad, right, guys? <laughs> all right. Find the perimeter. Okay. Ready? If this top is 2x to the third plus 8x squared plus 4x, then I'm going to have it down here as well. If this is x plus 3, then over here is x plus 3. So now I'm going to start adding up like terms. So I get 2x to the third and 2x to the third. If I add those together, I get 4x to the third. So perimeter is equal to 4x to the third. And then 8x squared and 8x squared is 16x squared. But then I have 4x, I have x, I have 4x, and I have x. So 4x, 5x, 9x, 10x. Oops, and this should be squared here. And then I have positive 3 and positive 3, so plus 6. So that's my perimeter. That's all it is. Just adding together the like terms. But you have to recognize when you have a rectangle, the top and the bottom are the same, the left side and the right side are the same. Triangle, so all I'm doing is I have to start, go here to here to here. So ready? Perimeter, 2x plus 3x, 5x, 5x minus 4x, 1x, which is just x, negative 7 minus 9, negative 16, negative 16 plus 12, negative 4. It's done. Ooh, that's a cakewalk. And y'all ready for the bonus? <laughs> We're going to see how well critical thinking skills are. Sit in front of you. There's nothing wrong. I'm just sitting here. All right. So they told us, they told us right here. This is the whole perimeter. Agree? <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to go 3x squared or to the third, minus 2x to the second, minus 7x, plus 9. And then I have to subtract these two sides. I have to subtract those. Okay, so minus 6x squared, minus 7x, and minus x to the third, minus 5. Okay? You feel comfortable with what I've done so far? All right, so let's rewrite without having any parentheses. So I'm going to distribute negative here and here. So I get negative 6x squared. Negative 7x turns to positive 7x. And then I'm going to distribute here and here. Ne x to the third turns to negative x to the third. Negative 5 turns to positive 5. Now I'm going to look for some of my like terms. So I have to the third to 
So 3 minus 1 is 2, so I get 2x to the third. <coughs> this one and this one can combine together. It gives me negative 8x to the second. What happens to the uh, negative 7x and the positive 7x? Yeah, they're gone. They just eliminate each other. And then I have 9 and 5 added together. So I get 14. So this missing side right here is 2x to the third minus 8x squared plus 14. If I added the red and the th the two yellow highlighted things, I would go back to my original perimeter. Woohoo! What do y'all think? No. No? No. It's not too bad. I mean, I cried myself to sleep last night, but I stopped crying around 11. But don't you do that every night? I do. I prefer crying myself to sleep. Helps it's not bad. It's, helps, a, it's a good release. Helps me sleep better. My wife might make fun of me, but hey. All right. So... Page 21 and 22. All of them. Hey, friends. A reminder. Shh. A reminder. Page 21 and 22 are homework. A reminder on the bottom of 22 says odd answers on Schoology. So if you go back on to Schoology and you go to Algebra 1, our group. <laughs> And you go to PEF odd answers. Yeah, it'll be PEF2. And so if you click on PEF2, it has, if you click on that, it'll take you right. I think it defaults you to go to a new site. If you go there, the odd answers take this guy two minutes and 36 seconds to run through. Okay? So the answers are indeed there. Okay, and if the answer is there on YouTube, if you don't want it to be in English, change the subtitles to whatever you want. So let's change the subtitles today. We're going to change the subtitles to auto-generated. Uh, we're going to go back to subtitles. We're going to change it to auto-translate. And we're going to change it to Aramea. How's that sound? Boy, my words look funny. There it is. It'll work out those problems for you if you wanted that as a guide. Now, now some some parents are emailing. That's fine. And I always just say, hey, these are things that I have available for kids to use. So I'd say try it. Maybe have the video pulled up. But like, try the problem first, and then watch how I work it out. If you got it right, cool, you're doing it right. If you got it wrong, either I'm wrong or you're wrong. I might be wrong though. And know too, we can see like how many people view it. So, so 